Hello guys and thanks for watching the first tutorial video of VAS FMC 2.10. I'm going to show you how to utilize the new flight management and guidance computer of VAS FMC 2.10 to plan a short range flight of about one hour from Frankfurt International Airport to Vienna International. So let's start. As you can see here the aircraft prompt is flashing red and uh, with VSFMC 2.10 it's very very important to select an appropriate aircraft profile because all the speeds and limits and the engine limiting and the derated thrusts and the climb profile and the descent profile and so on is calculated based on the aircraft you are flying. So the outcome will be utterly wrong if you try to fly an A320 with a uh, Boeing 747 profile or something. So for this flight I'll select an A320 and then I'll go to the init page and here I'm going to insert our flight plan. Um, let's insert the departure and uh, destination airport and then I can request my flight plan online on vroute by hitting the init request button then we switch to the ARCAS system and request a flight plan online. Let's just select this one. Now we're switching back to FMGC mode. Um, then I insert my flight number Lufthansa 3430. This is the number I usually use when flying online on uh, VATSIM. Then I select the cruise flight level. Since this flight is eastbound, I select an odd flight level of uh, 330. And then I select a cost index of 500. The cost index is a number between 0 and 1000. And the higher the cost index is, um, the more fuel you will use. You will go faster with a higher cost index and you will go slower but have a longer range and less fuel consumption with a low cost index. So now I want to access the init B page to insert our weights. Um, but as you can see, the page is not accessible. Why is this? This will be an often asked support question. So the answer is you can't access the init B page while the engines are running. This is simply impossible. We are in the wrong flight phase now. So I just shut down the engines and X-plane, uh, let them spool down, and then we will be able to access this page. Um, during uh, this time, let's select our uh, standard instrument departure from the database. I'll depart from runway 18 and fly the Sulus 3 Sierra departure, which I insert here. Oh my god, where it is? There it is. Insert. And I'm going to approach uh, Vienna uh, runway 29 via the uh, Masua transition. Uh, this one. This one is it, yeah, exactly. Okay, as you can see, the engines have spooled down, and um, the arrows are indicating we can now access the B page. I insert a zero fuel rate of 59 tons. Remember, the units are always a metric with VAS FMC, so inserting 59 does not mean 59,000 pounds, but 59,000 kilograms. Um, and I can pre-select a uh, taxi fuel um, of, I just select 2.5 tons, um, which is, I think, appropriate for Frankfurt, where you usually have to wait in line for, for takeoff for a few minutes um, because it's a really a busy airport. And then I hit the fuel planning prompt, and now the flight plan is iterated to um, generate the um, appropriate profile, uh, the fuel consumption and so on. And uh, you can see we should board 7.6 tons of fuel. Uh, remember this value is not automatically transferred to X-Plane or Flight Simulator. You have to board the fuel yourself. Um, you can see the other calculations done by the FMGC here that uh, the trip time will be 1 hour and 21 minutes. We will have a trip fuel of 3.6 tons, um, a reserve fuel of uh, 5% and we'll have a final time of 30 minutes giving us a 1.1 ton uh, final fuel when we arrive 
uh, and an extra time of uh, uh, one hour and 48 minutes uh, by the extra fuel of four tons. Uh, we can of course correct this for uh, headwind or tailwind at uh, the cruise altitude if we have the appropriate wind data. Now on the takeoff performance page um, you see the flight management guidance computer pre-calculated the um, V1, V rotate and V2 speeds. Um, the real Airbus FMGC doesn't do this. I think it does it only in the A380. In the A320 in real life you would have to look this up uh, in one of your books and uh, tables and charts but as Practically all pilots today have their uh, uh, their takeoff calculation on their notebook. We decided to uh, integrate it into uh, the SFMC also. So let's just copy the values and I'll select the transition altitude of uh, 5000 feet. Um, then I can pre-select a thrust reduction altitude. This is the altitude where the initial thrust reduction takes place and you have to grab your thrust levers and put them out of the um, takeoff detent into the climb detent. We'll do this at uh, 1500 feet. And the acceleration altitude is the altitude where the aircraft will lower, to lo uh, will lower the nose to accelerate uh, from the speed given by the speed reference system after takeoff um, when it was first engaged and then uh, de decelerate observing the, the flap limits to uh, 250 knots and uh, we'll select the acceleration at uh, 1800 feet. Um, on the right side there's also an interesting setting uh, the takeoff trim setting you can um, pre-select uh, a takeoff trim of uh, 2.6 degrees up and if you do this here your trim setting in X-Plane will be adjusted accordingly. This um, prompt here is the derated thrust or uh, flex thrust setting we support both so you can either derate your takeoff thrust by a percent for example enter D0.8 to derate the thrust by 8% or you can also use uh, flex thrust enter F45 to derate to the thrust that the engines would output if the outside air temperature was 54 degrees Celsius. Now switching to the next page you can see the climb that the FMGC calculated for us. The managed climb speed will be 289 knots uh, of course, this speed will be selected only when above 10,000 feet. And then when switching over to Mach mode, we'll climb uh, with uh, 0 0.04 Mach. And uh, the cruise speed uh, will be Mach 0.78. And the descent will just hold Mach 0.08 until we hit 277 knots and then the descent will continue with 277 knots until 10,000 feet where the speed will again be reduced to 250 knots.